Hey guys, how's it going? Today is Monday, June 5th, 2023. Just got home from school here today. Just finished up my freshman year. School was done until next year. Anyways, today, gonna be doing some chisel plowing up here at the Heifer Farm. I did some chisel plowing over the weekend and then some on Memorial Day. My pap had been working at disking that ground down. He's up there in the neighbor's field, straight up the road. From the heifer farm here, uh, he's working that down right now, 2294 in the disc. I'm up here for the 2290, we got it on the chisel plow. We're trying to get all of our ground ready so the custom planters can come in and uh, plant our corn for us since we lost our tractor and corn planter last Friday due to a fire. So yeah, very unfortunate. I'll throw some pictures in here. And uh, I'll talk a little bit more about it here later on in this video. So yes indeed, we lost the 5140. Uh, I believe the fire was something to do with electrical. Normally we don't chisel plow up this tractor. I mean it's only two wheel drive. It handles the chisel plow as long as you're getting traction. It has enough power but sometimes you'll lose traction being two wheel drive. Normally we run the 2294 on here, but like I said, Pat's disking with it. And we're trying to get as much fill work done as we can here, so that's why we're using this. We have no other tractor that's big enough to run it. Ground is terrible dry, terrible hard. Uh, you can't really run very fast because it's just this thing hard, it just works the tractor. spots here it always kind of lays wet and, then, and uh, back there I had to lift the chisel plow up because it's kind of wet and the tractor couldn't get any traction so it is kind of nice to see that we still do have some moisture it's not a lot though too far from being done just have this section here and that section there to do and I want to raise the chisel plow up out here at the sun and the one fitting where it threads into the bottom of the cylinder back there blew apart so this thing had new hoses put on it but it just didn't have new ends where the hose threads onto the part that gets into the cylinder if that makes any sense so I quit anyhow. It's about five o'clock. Got calves to feed and a bunch of other stuff to do. We'll get that line fixed up tomorrow. It's not a big deal. You gotta have breakdowns like that. Uh, anyhow, the farm store is not open anyhow, so it's not like we can get it fixed tonight. We got some other stuff we need to get done. So we went down to where the 5140 and the planter was at. Unhooked the planter from it because we got a tow truck coming later on to move the tractor out of the field so we can plant the field tomorrow whenever they come to plant it all for us. Most of that farm was done. Just a couple of those lower strips there that need planted and then that strip there where the tractor caught fire. So I guess uh, just gotta move the tractor to the farm not sure what the insurance company is going to do yet with the tractor. Probably got to go to some salvage yard, but we'll see. Right now, we're 
right now I'm up here desking this field that I was chiseling yesterday. Dad's down there feeding, I don't know if you can see him. The skip loader. Hatch up there in the 2290, finishing uh, what I did chisel last night. The chisel plow broke. Got that thing going again this morning. This is a little fitting that screwed into the hydraulic cylinder there. And, uh, a very hard fix so I'm back at her again. It's very cloudy but overcast today. A bunch of smoke in the air from the Canadian wildfires. Like some places like over there you can't even see the mountain. You can see this mountain a little bit but it's just so uh, smoky. Got all this upper piece chiseled up here now. Earlier my path was chiseled and I was disking. Wow the bolts that hold the one flange on for the one bearing on the gang in front of the chisel plow. The nuts backed off. The holes are slotted. There's not a solid hole on that thing. So whenever those nuts back off of those bolts, it just let everything get down. So we got that fixed. And then by that time it was lunchtime. So that's around three o'clock right now. Just got all this chiseled, working it desking it over for the first time I got like half the field done as you can see it's raining that is awesome we had a shower earlier and it didn't last long at all it was about 10 drops I'm thinking that's what this is going out to but uh, we need the rain so I'm going to keep desking I don't care how much it rains if it rains too much and I'm going to quit oh well we need the rain really bad that rain didn't last long at all. It lasted about as long as the last shower did. It's just enough to make the hood of the tractor a little wet, but see the heat off the engine evaporated that. Got the top filled all disked up there. It's ready to plant. I uh, just got a couple rocks. Need to take off. Coming down here to hop in this old girl and get this piece tore up. The next morning here now I came up to the heifer farm with all the grain on the side by side and I'm working at feeding them here before I get out and finish chiseling this filled up. I'm getting there. The ones, the calves out front, I got them fed their calf feed already. They still had silage from yesterday. The ones out back still got some hay and some silage. I'll just grab the skid loader and push that in. And then the far pen down where the spring and heifers are. The heifers are going to be having calves soon. Uh, they need silage. We usually got to give them silage about every day. Getting the skid loader here to the New Holland LS180. We keep up here. Got the big feed bucket on it for use for the silage. And uh, go grab some silage out of the trench and get these heifers fed. That way we can get out there and get that fill work done today. <laughs> You can see the heifers are coming down off the hill there. They hear me down there feeding. We give them a little bit of silage. The grass hasn't been growing much lately. It doesn't have a lot of feed value. So we got a male hay here in this feeder. And then uh, we give them a scoop of corn silage every day. Just let that sit there for now. We'll have to use it later. We got some rocks to pick. I need to do some spraying up here after we get the field work done. The problem is though, for being so dry, you almost have to have a little bit of rain to get the spray to work. I've noticed that, how it does so much better if you have some moisture there. It'll kill off faster. Eventually, the weeds will kill off, even when it is dry like this, but hopefully we get some rain. 
most of the heifers are out on pasture but we do have a bunch of beef cattle out back here along with the springing heifers down there and then the younger calves out front they're still here we don't put them out on pasture but some of the older animals we always put them out during the summertime it's nice because they can graze we got field work to do we don't really have time to get them all fed i mean if we had to we could make it work but it's just so nice having them out on pasture like that but on a dry year like this it's not nice because you end up having to feed them hay and stuff anyhow but it is what it is you can't do nothing about it i just hope we get some rain here soon The older animals get high moisture corn, the younger calves get calf feed though, the pens out front. Alright, everybody's fed, everybody looks happy. Time to get some field work done. Morning in there, 22. Check the girl there. We get to go. Cold, I think. This piece out back of the barn here was terrible weedy. We could not get it chiseled up because the chisel plow just kept plugging up. So what we actually did was unhook the call to packer off the big disc and went over it. I went over it once. My dad went over it a second time. But the ground's so hard we can't get the disc to dig in under the weeds and bring the soil up. So we did get it to come up a little bit, but it's pretty clumpy now. All we got here is our little Alice Chalmers. I believe it's a 10, 10 or 12 foot disc. I'm not sure. It might be 10 foot. But we got a brilliant call to packer behind it. And pulling it with the 2290. Now I ran this setup for quite a few years. Before we had gotten that Krause there, we had the John Deere 310. And this disc, a lot of times my pap would run the John Deere. And I'd run this little alice chalmers with the little call packer behind it well, it does a decent job but you're probably wondering why don't we have the call packer hook behind the big disc well we can't get into the field with it we used to but we had laid two bags out here along the edge of the field last year and they started the bags up too far so there's a fence post right right there can see it through my finger up at the end of the bag um we can't get in there that fence post i think we could tear the post out but i don't think we could still get between the fence up there in the bag so we're just trying this out i think it's gonna work um what the packer does is kind of just breaks the clumps up and lets a nicer finish to it because the disc doesn't really do that you can see kind of here where I was disking with the packer and then up here it's kind of where it was just disked. It just lets these big clumps call the packer kind of levels it out nice. Does a better job. I think it'll work. Just have to hit it a couple times and hopefully get her done and uh, get the planter here tomorrow. Yeah, the old 22, she's a little bit overkill for it, but uh, you know what they say, overkill is underrated. Yeah, no problem pulling this thing at all. The 870 would pull it fine, I'm sure, but that's uh, the best tractor we got to pull it for now. If you see the mountain there, it's very smoky, even worse than yesterday. Yeah, it's terrible smoky out here, so hats off to you guys up in Canada fighting them fires. It's this bad down here, I can only imagine how bad the fires and the smoke and all that stuff is. Like, if you look out there at the tree line, you might not be able to pick it up on the camera, but it's super smoky. Got about half of this field done. This is doing all right. It's breaking it up pretty good with the packer. That 18 foot disc up there, it folds up. So it's probably only, I don't know, maybe eight, nine foot wide when it's folded up. But the call packer doesn't. It's uh, 16 foot. 
and it doesn't uh, fold up. The old John Deere disc was 16 foot and it didn't fold up so it's kind of alright to get around places. Planning on getting another call to packer in the future and then getting rid of the 16 foot getting fold up for that disc. Anyways, we're getting her down with the good old 2300 Alice Chalmers. This disc was bought and used at an auction, a local farm auction actually our neighbor down the road here had sold his cows and sold some of his equipment and my uncle had bought this disc we had had the call packer before because we had an old uh, Oliver white disc i believe we had taken it to the junkyard a few years ago it hasn't been used for a long time it's just sitting in the fence row doing no good so we got rid of it kind of looked identical to this except this one here is orange it might have been a little bit different yeah she's a beaut this was actually one of my first field work jobs i'd ever did learned how to do in the same exact tractor in the same exact field so that's pretty cool <laughs> Especially if you do some chisel plowing or any type of tillage, disturb the soil a little bit. It's got to make the rocks work up. So, yeah, there's not too terrible many. Just some real big ones along the fence there. There's a bank there, and kind of catch it with a disc, and then I think it rolls down out of that bank there. But yeah, we don't want to be busting somebody else's equipment up if they're coming in here doing planting. So we want to make sure we get all the ones that are full. Uh, do the damage uh, a couple of those big ones that do a lot of damage but mostly the small ones we don't usually worry too much about them because they aren't gonna do too much so in here i'm not gonna get too close because you never know where there's gonna be a copper head or a rattlesnake in amongst them rocks but pretty much this whole fence row here is full of rocks same with this pasture field up there up over that ledge there there's a bunch of rocks there where at one time back in the day they were all hand picked off of these fields before they had farmed them and actually over time they just kept getting bigger and bigger bigger piles and we're still adding to them today but we got modern machinery to do that we don't uh we don't pick them by hand we have before but the skid loader is available we try to use it
So it's been a little while since I filmed for this video, but gotta wrap it up here today by talking about this 5140 that burn up. We had gotten the corn all in the ground and it's all up. All the corn we planted this year is up. It's not doing too bad. Could be doing better, but we didn't get enough rain whenever we needed it to make it grow. But uh, we'll just, we'll take what we get. We're very blessed that we have got the rain that we did get because other places haven't. That was a pretty sweet corn planter that they had. It was a Kinsey 16 row. It was, uh, it was a pretty new planter. It had the conceal set up for the fertilizer. So I'd never really seen that before. It just put the fertilizer right beside the burrow. The one press wheel there is like sliced in half and the fertilizer just runs through and stuff. So yeah, it was pretty, pretty sweet to get some action of that. Start off here. This all happened on Friday. It's been a couple weeks ago. It's been like three Fridays ago, actually. My pap had started planting at like 5.30 that morning. The tractor's working fine. Got to be 12.30 at lunchtime. And my dad was like, better go eat lunch. So pap shut the tractor down and they got up to the farm where he was planting. It's like a minute and a half away. Till he got up here, the neighbor had been out mowing his grass. He had looked out back after he was putting his lawnmower away. The strip that my pap was planting, it was right out back of his house. So he seen the tractor out there and he seen a big old puff of smoke come up here somewhere. And then after that, it was just gone pretty much. As soon as it started, it just spread back. Like the fire had to have started right here at the firewall where all this electronical stuff is, you know, for the dash. But at the time the wind was blowing and it was blowing back. So everything from here back, there's like nothing left. The fire got so hot once it started then on the interior and then the tires, whenever they caught, it was like a matter of time and there's nothing left. So at that point, the fire company had came and they were able to save the corn planter. Um, the fertilizer boxes are melted and that kind of stuff, but the planter is salvageable. We did buy it back from the insurance company. The insurance company totaled both the tractor and the planter, but the tractor is uh, gotta go to either a junkyard or a salvage yard here. Yeah, it's not staying here, it's gotta leave, but the planter, it is staying. The night before the tractor had caught fire, my dad and I went all through this tractor. I had blowed the radiator out, the air filter, we even took the roof off, blowed the condenser out, pretty much everything you could clean out. So, like, it had to be an electrical because no dry material or anything anywhere it could have caught up front. I mean, just by the looks of everything, it had to be electrical that started the fire. Yeah, it's pretty crazy how fast it went up in flames. We were very blessed and fortunate that nobody was running the tractor at the time because if they did, I mean, they probably could have got out, but, you know, it's crazy how fast it went up in flames, so. Yeah, so we're down the tractor, but everybody's saved. Nobody got hurt. At the end of the day, that's all that matters. The tractor can be re replaced, but uh, people can't. Very unfortunate, but at the same time, we were just blessed the way it happened. Yeah, this was my favorite tractor. Um, gonna miss it, but I think you guys will like the new replacement we're gonna be getting, so that'll be a future video. Lots of memories in this thing, riding along planting corn, mowing hay. This tractor used to do everything, pretty much. Planted corn, mowed hay, raked hay. It would bale hay sometimes if we needed it to, but it had a front end loader for on it. These brackets, we were told that they probably aren't any good because the fire got so hot, probably took the temper out of them. So they probably wouldn't hold up. All the controls and hoses and wiring and stuff had burnt in the fire, so none of that's any good. Like, all of this stuff is junk. Pop the hood here, maybe. Yeah, the, the fire had gotten so hot, it just blew the top of the radiator off. Some of the valve covers are burnt on the engine, but I don't know if it, the engine's any good or not. Probably the head and stuff might need redone. But, just from the heat of the fire, I'm sure. I don't think the motor's locked up. It's still got oil on it and stuff. 
the front axles, the rims, all that kind of stuff would probably be still good. Pretty much everything else is just junk. As I was saying there, lots of memories riding along here in the seat or behind the seat. Yeah, planting corn with pap, done that quite a few times. I would sit back here behind the seat. There's just enough room for me to stretch my legs across when I was little. A lot of times I'd end up falling asleep back there, so yeah. Don't miss the tractor. Very sad to see the tractor go, but there's really nothing we could do about it. We're just lucky we could save the planter. It has a little bit of fire damage here. It's just gonna need sandblasted and repainted here on the tongue. That stuff's fixable. Uh, needs new hydraulic hoses. I hope this pump's good, but we lost the monitor and all the wiring. So we just need a monitor, wiring, hoses, and eventually fertilizer boxes. But the thing was though, we haven't been running fertilizer on this planter for the past two or three years. So it's not like we need them. We'll probably eventually put some on here because I'm sure we'll probably run fertilizer sometime in the future. Yeah, just the fire got so hot, it just melted the stuff into like a liquid. It's just, it's pretty crazy. And the planter is like covered in beet juice because those rear tires had fluid in them. Beet juice was the stuff that they had in them and it just exploded it all over the planter. Alrighty, thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. It's kind of a sad video, but again, had to make it for a little bit of entertainment. Uh, just to let you guys know the truth and what was going on here. All right, more videos come this summer, so stick around and we'll see you guys later. Have a good one.